Welcome back to the Hardware Unbox News Corner. Feels like it's been a little while since we've run one of these on the channel, but it's a good time to get back into it because there's a few news topics to talk about. Before that though, if you did miss our review of the Ryzen 3 3100 and Ryzen 3 3300X in the flood of notifications yesterday, well worth going back and checking out how those $100 to $120 processors fare against other entry-level options from AMD and Intel. Our first topic today involves something we briefly mentioned at the end of our Ryzen 3 review but didn't really elaborate on, given only 20% of people generally watch our videos to the end. I'm sure a few people missed it as well. So let's get everyone up to speed and add a bit more information. The basic news here is that AMD's upcoming Zen 3 processors will not be compatible with 300 and 400 series motherboards, only X570 and the newly announced B550. This means all X470, B450, X370, B350, and A320 boards will not receive BIOS updates to support Zen 2 processors. No doubt news that will frustrate and disappoint owners of older boards expecting future compatibility with the AM4 socket. There's been a bunch of confusion around this topic, so let's explore exactly what AMD has said on the matter. The first information we got on this was the slide as part of their B550 presentation, which details motherboard chipset support across AMD's CPU line. As you can see here, Zen 3 is only supported on X570 and B550, but the confusion has come because AMD also does not list support for Zen 2 on 300 series boards. As we know, many B350 and X370 boards do in fact support Ryzen 3000 processors via a BIOS update. This has led many people to believe that AMD is just ending official support for 400 series chipsets with Zen 3 and that it will be up to motherboard manufacturers whether they want to include support. But let's take a look at a few other official pieces of information from AMD. One is the new chipset support table on amd.com, which lists partial support for Zen 2 on 300 series boards via beta BIOS updates, but clearly lists Zen 3 as not compatible with 400 series chipsets and older. AMD also released a statement today on the future of the AM4 socket, saying the following on Zen 3 architecture support with pre-500 series chipsets. AMD has no plans to introduce Zen 3 architecture support for older chipsets. While we wish we could enable full support for every processor on every chipset, the flash memory chips that store BIOS settings and support have capacity limitations. Given these limitations and the unprecedented longevity of the AM4 socket, there will inevitably be a time and place where a transition to free up space is necessary. The AMD 500 series chipsets are that time. So AMD states here that Zen 3 won't work with older chipsets and the main reason they give is BIOS capacity for those older boards. This doesn't seem to take into account that there are larger BIOS capacity 400 series boards, for example, MSI's Mac series like the B450 Tomahawk Max, but that's the official reason AMD are giving right now. Given that AMD doesn't explicitly state that no 400 series boards will work with Zen 3 processors, at this point, some people are probably still hoping that this is just a Zen 2 with 300 series board situation. So we just want to clear this up with extra information that we've been told when we ask some clarifying questions on this. As it stands right now, AMD will not be supporting Zen 3 processors on 400 and 300 series chipsets. Without this support, motherboard manufacturers will be unable to provide BIOS updates for their 400 and 300 series boards to support Zen 3. The end result is that all B450, X470 boards and so on will not support Zen 3, whether the OEMs want to or not. So just to reiterate, there won't be some boards that have Zen 3 support and some that don't. OEMs will be unable to provide the necessary BIOS updates to any board because AMD won't be supplying the necessary pieces of code. So. I just want to stress that this is the situation as of right now, uh, but who knows what may happen down the line. AMD may backtrack on this if there is massive public backlash. They did backtrack with Zen 2 on 300 series boards, so we'll have to see how that one plays out. However, when we asked for clarification on the matter in the last 24 hours, what we've just told you is what we were told. So as far as we know, this is the current information on yeah, where things stand. Steve will have a lot more information and thoughts on this whole situation in a video early next week, so I don't want to steal any of his thunder, but you should look out for his video because he'll be diving a lot deeper into it, has been gathering thoughts from motherboard makers and what they think about the whole situation in the process, more information from AMD, all that sort of thing will be in that video. 
So we'll be diving deep into, yeah, 400 series compatibility shortly. In the meantime, we'd love to get your thoughts on the situation in the comments below. I'm sure this news will disappoint a lot of people that bought B450 motherboards, in particular based on promised future CPU support. So let us know, especially if you're a B450 owner or X470 owner, what you think of this move in the comments. So, while AMD is stuffing around with platform support, Intel is also stuffing around with their own platform support weirdness. Not supporting 10th gen CPUs on Z390 is already a bit strange given the CPUs are not fundamentally different to 9th or 8th gen parts that work on 300 series chipsets, but now we're hearing some weirdness around Z490. Earlier in the week, Gigabyte mentioned during a live stream that Z490 motherboards will support future 11th gen CPUs. This fits with many statements from motherboard vendors that Z490 supports PCIe 4.0, even though 10th gen CPUs do not support it. The expectation is that 11th gen CPUs will be the first consumer line from Intel that bring PCIe 4.0, and they'll be backwards compatible on the Z490 platform. The weirdness comes from something that Steve and I were discussing in a Patreon live stream last night, and that is... Why hasn't Intel talked about future CPU support with Z490 motherboards? There have been lots of backlash around the platform and socket change this generation, but we know from AM4 that future CPU support is a huge selling point, and it's strange to me that Intel wouldn't be talking about how Z490 will support at least one generation of upgrades, instead of leaving that for motherboard OEMs to leak out in YouTube live streams. Current rumors suggest that 11th gen processors are codenamed Rocket Lake and will bring with it stuff like new CPU core architecture, XE graphics, PCI 4.0, while still being built on 14 nanometer. Whether or not this is true, we have no idea. There are also a few rumors suggesting that 12th gen CPUs will need yet another socket change. That's likely, but way too early to confirm either way. I just found it strange that, you know, they're leaving it to Gigabyte to announce this sort of future platform support rather than Intel getting on the front foot with that. It is something to advertise Intel, so probably should get on that. AMD has announced the Ryzen 4000 Pro series for enterprise and business applications in mobile form factors. Normally, wouldn't bother covering this sort of thing as Pro CPUs from AMD have historically been identical to the non-Pro versions, just with added security and management features. While this series also provides all those standard Pro benefits, the actual CPU specifications AMD are providing here are different. At the top of the stack is the Ryzen 7 Pro 4750U, which you'll note is not the 4700U or the 4800U. Instead, it sits between those two parts, offering a mixture of the core configuration and clocks. Like the 4800U, the 4750U is an 8-core 16-thread processor. However, it features a 100MHz lower base and boost clock, sitting at 1.7 and 4.1GHz respectively. It also takes the lower GPU configuration of the Ryzen 7 4700U, with 7 compute units clocked up to 1600MHz, instead of the full 8 CUs you get with the 4800U. The TDP of course remains the same at 15 watts default. The Ryzen 5 Pro 4650U, on the other hand, appears to be identical to the Ryzen 5 4600U. Meanwhile, the Ryzen 3 Pro 4450U is a new SKU. It has the same max boost as the Ryzen 3 4300U at 3.7GHz and the same 5 compute unit GPU, but it enables SMT, bringing this up to a 4 core and 8 thread processor. Base clocks have dropped slightly as a result. This makes it the only Ryzen 4000 U series part offering 4 cores and 8 threads. It's interesting to me that for the Pro series, AMD have decided to only offer SMT-enabled parts. We have seen a bit of a tendency for OEMs to put the non-SMT parts in their consumer laptops like the 4500U and 4700U instead of the 4600U and 4800U. But if an OEM wants to offer a Pro SKU, they won't be able to cheap out and not give SMT as all parts have it, which I think is a good move as that will ensure better performance in a given tier. A number of new laptops will use these Ryzen Pro SKUs, including new ProBook offerings from HP, and in what is great news for Lenovo fans, new ThinkPad models. MSI has discussed how Intel's 10th gen processors are binned in their latest MSI Insider livestream. The company has tested all of their Core i5, Core i7, and Core i9 CPU samples to assess silicon quality, putting them into one of three categories. Level B is the standard performance level with average quality, Level A are the best overclocking chips that can be pushed far, and Level C are below standard chips that don't have much overclocking headroom. 
What's interesting is that MSI are noting the Core i9 parts are much better binned than the other two categories, and generally they saw their Core i9-10900K and 10900KF samples overclock better than a respective Core i7 or Core i5 part. That's not exactly unexpected, but it's interesting to see the actual numbers, especially that MSI saw five times more CPUs with decent overclocking headroom in the Core i9 range than the Core i7 range. MSI also provided some voltage frequency curves for each CPU range, along with package power at a given frequency. MSI again show the Core i9 range being better binned in terms of voltage frequency than Core i7, which is in turn better than Core i5. For package power, MSI saw over 250 watts when pushing the Core i9 parts to 5.2 GHz, which was actually similar to the Core i7 parts despite two extra cores, thanks to binning. So it'll be interesting to see how the power consumption goes when we test out the total system consumption in our final review, which isn't too far away. AMD are now promoting the fact that Radeon RX 5600 XT graphics cards can be upgraded to support GDDR6 memory speeds at 14 gigabits per second. It now appears that most of the 5600 XT models on the market have 14 gigabits per second VBIOS updates available, including some that weren't previously available, like the Gigabyte Gaming OC and MSI Mech OC. If you do have an RX 5600 XT and haven't upgraded to the faster memory speed, it's well worth checking out the instructions on how to provide that update. AMD has this website with links to instructions for cards that require them. Other models did ship with 14 gigabits per second memory out of the box, and those are also seen here. Final topic for this week, ASRock has launched the first ATX12VO consumer motherboard, the Z490 Phantom Gaming 4SR. This board is designed specifically for ATX12VO, so it ditches the standard 24-pin connector for a combination of 10 and 6-pin connectors depending on how much power is required. There are then two power outputs that provide power for 5 volt devices like SATA drives. The idea behind ATX 12VO is removing the need for power supplies to provide 3.3 volts and 5 volt rails. Instead, those conversions can be done via existing converters on the motherboard, improving efficiency as the voltage conversion process is only done once. This should reduce idle power consumption and allow ATX 12VO systems to be more compliant with modern efficiency standards that are required in some countries. It is a bit strange that ASRock would launch a consumer board like this right now, given ATX 12VO is more designed for pre-built systems. You will of course need an entirely new power supply platform to build with this motherboard too, so I'm sure the appeal will be pretty limited and who knows about when those power supplies will become available. That's it for this week's News Corner. A few interesting topics there, particularly that one on 400 series boards. As we said, we're still investigating that. We'll have more information to share with you early next week. So stay tuned for that. Perhaps a good time to subscribe. Hopefully we'll be back as normal with News Corner next week as well, if there's enough news to talk about. So another good reason to sign up. What else? We do have our Patreon page. We just did a live stream last night. Hopefully we'll be doing a few more of those from time to time. So it's a great time to sign up to the Patreon page, get access to that and our Discord chat, all that sort of thing. So thanks for all the support and we'll catch you in the next one.